Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a network mapped drive from your PC to your Xbox Series X dev mode. This is a really useful thing, it's going to allow us to transfer files from our PC to our Xbox directly without having to use My Files Explorer or without having to use an external drive. It's definitely something I'd recommend doing if you're going to be using RetroArch or dev mode a lot. In today's video I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. One, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch installed on your Xbox. This is not a dev mode or RetroArch setup video. I do have separate videos on my channel for that. I'll be leaving those linked in the description down below. You will need to go do that first before you can actually set up and map a network drive. And then lastly, of course, you will need access to a Windows computer. I would recommend having both your Xbox and your computer mapped up via Ethernet cable rather than wireless. It'll make transfer speeds a lot easier and a lot more consistent. And once you have all of that stuff set up, we're ready to actually map our network drive. And then we're going to get into the process of actually replacing our network drive and using that for our main RetroArch install so we can transfer files there a lot easier. So the first thing you need to do is of course have your Xbox turned on and be in dev mode and what we're going to be doing once we're here is we're going to be looking for the remote access URL. For me this is on the bottom right right here. We need to locate to here previously to actually install RetroArch but for today's video we're going to be locating here again and we're going to be getting some more information to map a network drive on our PC. Once you're on your device portal right here like I am right now what we're going to be doing is coming to our left menu bar here on the left. We're going to be looking for the file explorer option. We're going to be clicking this open and here we're going to see a file explorer path that's going to allow us to link directly to the internal storage on our Xbox. What we're going to be doing from this point is coming to the top right of this screen and we're going to be clicking the browse button right here. And this is going to open up some extra information in terms of a file explorer. So what we have a couple of things here at the very top here, we have the actual path. And this is what we can enter in our Windows PC to actually be able to locate to our drive. So what we're going to be doing is simply highlighting this. I'm just going to be copying by clicking Control and C and I'm going to be opening up a file explorer in Windows. And once this is opened up, I'm simply going to be coming here. I'm going to be clicking on the URL bar here at the top. I'm going to be pasting in the URL that we just had. I'm going to be clicking enter. Then it's going to bring up this Windows security option right here where we basically need to enter both the username and the password that are written right here to actually be able to access this drive so simply copy these from the screen right now once you've entered both of these simply click remember my credentials if you want to you're happy with everything click oh, click okay and then you should be brought to the files and right here now we're currently inside the files of our xbox we can come inside windows apps and here we have access to the internal storage on our xbox now from this point you have access to the internal storage on your xbox we're mapped directly to it Inside the Windows Apps folder, we can actually go a little bit deeper and we can actually find our RetroArch folder, which is right here. Now you may have two that show up, but for me it was the second one on the list and this has currently all of my RetroArch assets. And we also have our My Files Explorer application right here as well. And here at the bottom, we can see all deleted files, although this was just an empty folder for me. Now if we come inside our RetroArch folder, we can actually add some extra things here. Although I will be touching on that a little bit later in today's video. The first thing I wanna do is actually set up a network mapped drive first. At the moment, we need to manually input this URL every time we want to come back to the internal storage on our Xbox. This is not ideal and it can be a little bit annoying. So instead, we're going to be mapping a drive so we can actually get here super easily. So what we're going to be doing is coming to this PC on your file explorer. It should show up here on the toolbar on the left. Once this is done, we're going to be clicking map network drive. This button here at the very top, we're going to be clicking this open. And here we're going to be mapping a network drive. So the first thing we can do is select a drive letter. Here you can select anything you want. I'm just going to be leaving it as Z for me at the moment. Although you can choose anything you want. We're then going to be selecting a folder location so again we're going to be using the folder location from our xbox we have the option here then to reconnect at sign in and connect using different credentials you can feel free to enable or disable any of these things if you want i'm just going to be leaving reconnect at sign in as an option for me but you can feel free to turn that off and connect using different credentials isn't really applicable here at the xbox however you can feel free to enable it if you want once you have everything set up here we're simply going to be clicking finish and now you can see underneath this PC, we have a network drive mapped here. And if I come to this PC, you can see our new network locations right here, and it has been linked up here. Now, the only bad thing about this is every time you try to open this up when you new log in, you will have to enter the username and password again. So we do have a workaround for this. We can actually enter a command key right here that will automatically save the username and password for this. So what we're gonna be doing is coming to the bottom here again. We're gonna be copying and pasting this string right here. We're gonna be clicking Control C to copy it. And then we're gonna be opening up our command prompt. To do this, we click our Windows Start key on the bottom left. We're gonna be searching for CMD. And once we search for this, our command prompt should open up right here. We're gonna be left clicking to open up our command prompt. And then we should get this black screen right here. Once you open up the CMD, you'll be brought to this screen here. 
Now to actually paste inside here, we simply need to right click. It will automatically paste everything we have done. It will instantly grab the credentials and save them inside Windows. So now Windows will automatically add these credentials every time you try to cut this URL. So you'll no longer have to do it manually again, which is definitely a nice thing. And just like that, we have fully mapped and set up our network drive inside our PC. So now we can always come back here and add our files. So now that we have this mapped up, it makes it a lot easier to transfer files to and from RetroArch from our PC. However, it's not quite that straightforward. The way RetroArch is actually set up inside Xbox, it's actually split up into a couple of different folders. So if we locate to the actual application here, you may see a lot of the folders we actually normally have when using My Files Explorer on the application are missing from here. So you can't actually access any save files. You can't access a lot of the normal things you'd be able to access using My Files Explorer. So what you have as an option from this point is basically to recreate a lot of the folders in here. So your save states folder, your games folder, your saves folder, your config file even if you want to and add them all inside this folder so they're always accessible from a computer so you can really easily back them up or add new files and then we need to go into RetroArch and map these applications and folders to this folder instead so RetroArch will be updated to map to this folder rather than the default folder inside RetroArch so that just means again you can easily access the files here you can transfer files without using my files explorer and you have a couple of extra options like that which makes life a little bit easier when using RetroArch and when trying to transfer files but this is really useful for the games and consoles that you need to access a lot of times when you're adding BIOS files or anything like that it will definitely save you a lot of hassle when trying to do it like that so what I'm going to be doing from this point is creating a couple of different folders some of these will be optional depending on what you want to do but we're going to be making three or four folders here so I'm going to be making a folder called system I'm going to be making a folder named config I'm going to be making a folder named games I'm going to be making a folder named saves and I'm also going to be making a save state folder so here we've created a couple more folders. We have the config folder, we have the games folder, the saves folder, the save state folder, and the system folder. And these are going to be the folders that are going to be replacing the normal ones inside RetroArch. So what we're going to be doing from this point is going back over to our Xbox in dev mode. From this point, once RetroArch is launched, we're going to be coming down one. We're going to be coming to the settings. We're then going to be coming in here and we're scrolling all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to be looking for the directory option right here. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. And here we're going to be updating all of the folders that we created with the files that are necessary to that location. So one of the first thing we have were save files. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. We're going to be coming to our S drive. We're going to be coming to program files. We're then going to be coming to the Windows apps folder. We're going to be looking for the second 1E4C folder, which is our RetroArch version right here, 1.9.10. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. We're then going to be coming down here to the saves folder and we're going to be clicking A to come in here and then we're going to be clicking use this directory and now we have remapped our save files to now save in the saves folder instead. The next thing we're going to be doing is coming to our save states folder. Again, we're going to be coming down to the S drive. We're going to be coming down to program files, Windows apps, again, the second one E4C folder, coming to the save states folder and click use this directory. So what you need to do is go here step by step and update all the different files. The next thing we're going to be doing is the system BIOS, or in this case, it's actually in the system folder. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. We're going to be coming to our S drive. Again, we're going to be coming down to program files, Windows apps, the second one E4C folder. And in this case, we're going to be using the system folder that we created. We're going to be clicking use this directory. And just like that, we have it set up. Now you can do it for the remaining files that you have. Again, as mentioned, you might not have created all of the exact same files as me. So here you need to go through step by step and choose the exact files you want to have set up. Once you have everything set up how you like, we're going to be clicking the B button to come back out of here. We're going to be coming back to our main menu. We're going to be coming to configuration file and we're going to be saving our current config. And now all of these files are going to be remapped to the new location, which means we can now really easily access them from our PC using the new mapped network drive update our system files there, our game files and anything else we want and really easily locate to them there, which is going to help save us a lot of time in the long run and will really make our RetroArch experience a lot better. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to set up and map a network drive to your Xbox Series S and X and even specifically how to map it for your RetroArch. I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, both Franks and Sean Daly. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos and some other perks, be sure to click the join button underneath any video. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to map a network drive for your Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X with RetroArch. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to drop a super thanks in this video to support me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.